Welcome back, everyone, to more na more analysts at dawn. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. Now we're gonna have a match, another one v one, Atostic and Rar on Trojan Hills. Which apparently, Atostic has not played one v one. I'm guessing they're a teams player. I have not seen them much before, but I was really curious because I thought, who's this Atostic person? I just noticed them in a lot of matches, and I thought I should actually do a cast of them. So anyway, Rar apparently. Okay, this is apparently where Rar is actually doing the new strategy, which is a a locust rush. I'm not sure I'd call that new, but hey, that's a good old strategy. Good old bit of cheese, I suppose. Atostic, on the other hand, going for high puppies, which actually is a great answer. Not sure if Atostic has seen this already, but puppies are, once the reclaim gets going at least, a really good early game option to deal with the locusts. Now, double check the numbers, though. 410 damage. I'm pretty sure it would take three to kill a locust. Yes, it would. But still, for the value, it's not bad. Because remember, puppies do hit air, and they are very cheap. Should I think they... Are they nerfed? No, they weren't buffed yet. Actually, they've never been buffed. They are still 50. They've always been 50, but 50, that's fine. Compared to the 220 metal, it's still more value for three puppies, especially the Reclaim Grey Goo mechanic. Though I don't think they're going to be able to get any before managing to kill off any of these locusts. But that puppy coming in here is going to kill off... Well, even if it does kill off one of the locusts, that's still a lot of metal extractors dead. So clearly the puppies were meant more for scouting than anything else, and they have managed to scout, if nothing else, but yeah, that's the thing. They are the best answer to that, that Jumpbot has early game. It's just hard to build up enough of them sometimes, especially when you've been hit hard like that. Still, though, Atosic managed to take out a metal extractor in the meantime, so it's a bit even. Rar actually slightly behind in terms of metal, so Atostic, not bad, all things considered. They have to rebuild a little bit, but hey, that rebuilding is still working out for them. So overall, we have a slight metal use advantage for Atostic and a slight army value disadvantage, because again, puppies. Puppies do not last. But yeah, if Atostic built more puppies, they would be... And they have actually gotten a fair amount from the Grey Goo as well. That's three! That's as much as needed to kill off a locust! But again, Rar is finding value here and there, but they are finding value nonetheless. At any rate... Nice Ford. Okay, a bit of a Ford expansion coming in here from this Conjurer. Putting the Locust in a bit of an awkward position, having to go down into the ravine in order to avoid the Lotus, because that is going to be a bit of a problem otherwise. But Atostic, they are still... They're still building up. They got the Pyros going. They have enough Locust to at least stop... One, sorry, enough Puppies to at least stop one Locust. And they're expanding a little bit as well. I would think a Raven would be... Or not a Raven. A Razor would be a really good idea right now. Or just generally getting some expansion up. I realized why they're not. I mean, it's kind of difficult considering all the locusts around the map. And they are focused on getting the pyros up and getting the puppies up. But that next constable coming in here should be able to deal the damage needed to stop everything. So at this point, Rar looks to be in a really good spot to start harassing the expansions. Four locusts and not much really there to stop them. Conjure go or the con st constable goes down very shortly. And that is going to lead to basically everything in this plateau being torn to pieces. However, Atostic, again, they were ahead in terms of metal. Their army value is behind, but their metal is quite the advantage for them. And they now have a lot of puppies deciding to go for exactly that to deal with the power, the Locust. And at the same time, the power going in the back line. Unfortunately for it, there are enough defenses from Rar to stop this puppy in his tracks before it deals any damage. Not even able to retreat out of there. It is just dead. And Atostic, the main base at the same time. Doesn't have much to defend. The puppies going forward trying to be an assault force. I'm not really sure why, considering they are great as a defense force. Like I said, they would stop all these locusts. If those puppies were at home, these locusts would be dead. But again, Rar keeping Atostic's economic development behind it. At this point, Rar is now on par for metal use. But Atostic has the toad up. They will actually have proper anti-air going forward. And again, like I said, these puppies... If... If anything tries to attack them, if the locusts try to go for them, the locusts will die. Just, like, no, they, there's no way they can get through that. I mean, yes, the puppies do have to actually target, I think. I'm surprised they didn't go for those locusts. That was weird. Are they on hold fire? No, they're not on hold fire. Hmm, that's weird. Still, though, Atostic went for a very interesting forward strategy on the lotus. Like, forward lotus attack. I wouldn't be a bad idea if more of the fact that Atostic literally has no money to work with. I mean, they're way behind economically. 
If they weren't, I'd say this is interesting. Might work. Could be could be a thing. But given that they have no money, I just don't see it. And once those puppies go down, if they start taking out the commander here, well, that's it. And the locusts are coming in here. They are going to actually fly over the puppies. That's four dead locusts right there if overprotection properly works. And indeed, there's... There's three dead. One of them... Oh, no, four dead. There's the fourth. That's what I was looking for. Fifth going down thanks to the lotus. But I think it's going to be it. However, a lot of locusts going down. Unfortunately, this constable will not be able to hold the position and thus reclaim. Because that's a lot of reclaim coming here. What reclaim is that? 344? Not bad. But that is all the puppies. That's the thing. There are no puppies left. And there are still plenty of locust production facilities left. And a lot of locust production happening. So overall, Rara still has the advantage. If slightly. But it's still there. Toad, however, will be a way out. That can stop the locusts reasonably efficiently. And that means there is a bit of room. But again, locusts everywhere. Rars building all the laser towers all across their bases. Not really building a lot of bases, but what they are building is going to be extremely difficult to get through. So with that, I just don't see Rar managing to really do much or toss to do much either. Unless something changes in terms of the amount of money either one has. Which looks like Atostic is trying to change. Going towards the backline expansion, doing what they can to build up there. But again, locusts coming around the back side of the map. Those will be able to tear apart this expansion before it manages to get a whole lot of value. And at the same time, the pyro cannot get through here because there are too many lotuses. And I realize that might be difficult for you to understand when I'm saying locust and lotus. Because it probably doesn't sound that different. Even in my own head, I'm slightly confused. But at least it's not half a dozen units starting with an S sound. Which always threw me. Still, though, the Pyro does actually have a bit of one angle. A tiny angle, maybe to get rid of one metal extractor. That's something. The commander's going to stop them. Which is a bit unfortunate for that Pyro. But, alas, dear Pyro. Hardly knew him. Or poor Par Pyro, rather. Still, though, it is going to be a bit of an uphill slog. Jack's coming in, not a bad idea. That will at least be able to deal with the Lotuses reasonably well. Of course, the tank's coming on top of that, which would mean Rar's going to be able to pull their economic advantage into quite a bit of a unit advantage. Which, admittedly, they don't have right now. Atosic's actually way ahead in terms of unit value, most of that being the Toad, since the Toad is a very strong unit individually, and a very costly unit as well. It's 900 metal or so. 550, sorry. 550 metal. I think 900. But yeah, the fact that it's not near the, lo the Locusts here in the back line means that this back line is not going to be built up, and Atosic doesn't have much to work with, unfortunately. I mean, they do have enough that they could be pushing the commander into the factory and get that jack up faster. But it's not really relevant right now. And now Atosta... Ooh. Trying to go into the Toad. Trying to get into the back line. And now trying to jump away, realizing that there's nothing but a Blitz here. And there's the jump. Gets out of there just in time. But still, Atostic in a bit of a tight spot. Now that their opponent has gone for a ground switch and has the economic advantage, Atostic doesn't have much to work with. But, Atostics should be able to at least deal some damage on this welder. The Pyro, it's going down. It's not going to be able to kill off the welder in time. And the Blitz able to help stop that. And even with the burning, the welder should get down to about 300 HP before the burning stops. So overall, this is fine. Rar has managed to hold themselves in a really good position in Atostic. I don't understand why they aren't assist building the factory. Like... Now they're getting a caretaker, but they could have been assist building with the, with the commander the whole time. So the logic does kind of escape me. Regardless, though, Atostic still somewhat in this game, but now RAR, they have the ground forces to expand with, and they're going to expand fast. I mean, yeah, they've lost this last Locust, sure, or at least it's in a position where it can't easily harass, but Atostic doesn't have anything in the way of economy, and RAR knows it. Not much in the way of defense either. And again, RAR knows it. And the Blitz should be able to take out the commander without too much of an issue. Okay, never mind. They are going to have a bit of an issue. And the moderators are there to help out as well. But the entire force of Blitzes that's being built up over time, all six of them, seventh one in production, that will not have a problem dealing with the commander. Like, Atostic, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to deal with this in time. The reclaim is not a bad idea, but overall, they are falling behind fast. Like, Rar now, they've gone from being about even a medal to, in the last couple of minutes, being 3,000 medal ahead. And on top of that, their metal income 
is rising steadily. As is their army... Oh, no, the army value is getting up, up and matching it, but the thing is, a lot of the army value is Toad. So if we take out both Toads, that's actually about... See, Atostic's value right now, without the two Toads, is about 1,300. So it's about half of RAR, in terms of ground forces. Now, granted, the Moderators are a really good choice for getting rid of the Blitzes. That will do a lot of good. But the problem, of course, is can they get out of the way of the Blitzes because Blitzes are way faster than they are? And the answer is clearly no. The placeholder is going to do its best. But even then, the placeholder is not there in time. So regardless of the good intentions of that placeholder, it's going to be very difficult for any real damage to be dealt. Still, though, it will help out enough to at least keep a Tostic alive for one more minute. But that's one minute that may be too short because... Really, Atostic has got nothing else to push forward. This Jack up in the front lines, not able to get a whole lot of value. And that means Atostic right now, they are just playing the defense game. They have nothing going forward other than this small force of placeholders and moderators, which can easily be countered by an Ogre, and I imagine that'll be coming up in a sec. No, there's more Blitzes, but Blastwings as well, so the Blastwings will also help against that. Just to siege up and break everything here, and that being said, moderators are still going to be able to stop that, but that's moderator reload that's not being used on the Blitzes. And that opens things up. Because it does take a couple moderator shots to kill a blitz, so you need to have pretty good use of the moderators. And that's hard to see whether it's going to happen or not. Because they're going to need about half a dozen moderators, half a dozen more moderators, in fact. And it's just the question of economy, and the economy is just not going in Rar's favor. It's not going in Tostic's favor. The attrition is going in Rar's. Sorry, going in Tostic's favor. But that's all they have. And even that's falling apart as the blitzes catch up. And the Blast Wings start to actually deal with the meaningful damage. That is going to be a Atostic. Does not have any real army to deal with these Blitzes. One Moderator, one Placeholder does not do enough. Especially with the Blast Wings coming in. Setting everything on fire. At this point, Atostic is just about done. Unless it's something they have some Miracle. And again, the Moderators, maybe a bunch of Moderators being built as the expansions are being built up. Might be that Miracle. But again, it's just a matter of how they can actually maintain the forces when the Blast Wings and the Blizzards are coming in. Both dealt with by the Moderators, but only one can really be officially dealt with by the Moderators at a time. And clearly, it is the Blast Wings, which means the Blitzes have a field day getting in the back lines and ripping everything to pieces. This looks like it's going to be a Tostic, not throwing in the towel, being very resilient. But I don't see that actually panning out in the long run. I'm pretty sure I don't see any way out of this. Especially not with the money going to the Airplane Factory. I mean, there's one slight glimmer of hope in the fact that the f dead attack was rebuffed, and there's 1,500 metal inside of Atostic's base for reclaim, but RAR has so much metal around the rest of the map, has twice the economy, even with all this reclaim, it's still not necessarily enough, and I kind of wish Atostic would reclaim that now, or build up the energy economy and then reclaim it, because right now that is what they're missing, is energy economy. But I'm not sure that they're focusing on that. It looks like they're focusing primarily on getting those moderators to do their job. And not so much on realizing that their energy economy is so low, they cannot build this airplane factory in any reasonable amount of time. The wind generators need to be built first, followed by some reclaim, followed by the airplane factory. And the reclaim right now is not the best idea because, again, 30 on 8, on eight energy with the excess. That is not the efficient option, I'm afraid. But Atostic, realizing this, does get those wind generators up. It's almost a good thing that those blitzes came in and actually distracted Atostic's commander and forced them to get out of building the, the air plant. So they realized, wait a sec, I need to build more energy. Because they do. But now they got that sorted. Or getting that sorted. And at least on this map, 1.7 is the minimum at this level. So the wind generators will be able to efficiently build back up, and that'll be easy. Atostic can easily start building that up and start getting their energy back up, start getting the production back up. And then get the airplane factor that they so dearly want. Assuming they actually get that without too much reclaim. Unfortunately, they are having to reclaim a fair bit to open up the room for the wind generators. While at the same time, RAR coming with their commander. Classic RAR! We haven't seen this in a while, but there they are, having expanded as much as they have on top of the blast, on top of all the blasting attacks, on top of this Revenant. And now the commander coming in here. The Blitz is flanking, and nothing in Atostic's base is set up to deal with this. Atostic has just now managed to build up or rebuild their energy economy. And that's going to go down in a second. So Atostic at this point, valiant efforts, holding on, but it is going to be a victory for RAR. Atostic's commander going down is the key thing. If Atostic's commander goes down, that's it. Atostic will throw in the towel. 
And at this point, there's nothing stopping that from happening. Atostic losing their commander. And we should see the GG right away. There is no production available. Nothing that's not going to be destroyed right now. And no economy either. No builders. Nothing. Well, there's one constable. That's it. And actually, really? Really? You're still holding on, Atostic. I mean, like I said, valiant effort. Kudos to that. But this game is over. And Atostic realizing this throws in the towel and gives Rod the victory. So overall, that was an interesting set of strategies coming in there. I like the way Atostic was building up. It just felt like had Atostic controlled that a little bit better, like had the puppies in the right spot to defend against the locusts and then move forward only when they had a stronger economy and stronger expansion, I could have seen that working. Like once they took care of the locusts, then the expansion was a bit safer and they could have taken that and then pushed from there. But, yeah, those blast wings, those locusts early on really caused problems. Sorry, blast wings. The locusts caused problems. The blast wings later on caused problems as well. But the locusts early on were a major hurdle. And now that that is... Well, I mean, that once those are taken care of, well, then... There wasn't really the expansion afterwards. And like I said, the puppies could have taken care of that a lot more efficiently. But it seemed like Atosic was much more focused on forward play... And they did mention they hadn't played this 1v1, so I'm guessing they're a very prolific teams player. Because they have a decent elo, which leads me to believe they're a teams player that's not to use to 1v1, and the fact that in 1v1 you have to deal with the entire map, not just a chunk of the map, which you tend to in 2v2. Or 3v3 or other teams games. Anyway, that is going to be it for me today. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And tomorrow I'm not going to be doing any Battle Royale stuff because Easter... So, next stream will probably be Thursday. If not, then it'll be next Saturday. So anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good night, everyone.